Welcome. This is an educational video by Chad Smalley with Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This video is intended to demonstrate the normal anatomy of a right shoulder during a diagnostic arthroscopy with the patient in a lateral decubitus position. We begin our evaluation of the shoulder by carefully inserting an arthroscope through a posterior portal into the glenohumeral joint. An anterior portal is also established through the rotator interval to allow access to our probe and other arthroscopic instruments. The first structure palpated is the long head of the biceps tendon. Although anatomic variation in the interarticular appearance does occur, this shoulder demonstrates the typical origin of the biceps from the supraglenoid tubercle and the superior labrum. The biceps then travels anteriorly where it exits the shoulder joint and enters the bicipital groove as seen here. The next structure probed is the subscapularis tendon, one of the four rotator cuff tendons. The subscapularis originates from the scapula, the fibers pass from medial to lateral and insert on the lesser tuberosity of the proximal humerus. Just overlying the subscapularis is the middle glenohumeral ligament. This ligament arises from the anatomic neck of the humerus and inserts into the mid anterior portion of the labrum. The next structure probed is the anterior aspect of the labrum. The labrum is a fibrocartilaginous rim attached around the margin of the glenoid fossa. The labrum deepens the articular cavity and protects the edge of the glenoid rim. As you can see here, degenerative wear due to normal use is not an uncommon finding during arthroscopy. As we advance the arthroscope anteriorly and inferiorly, you can visualize the inferior glenohumeral ligament, which originates as a portion of the fibrous glenoid labrum. The inferior glenohumeral ligament is the primary restraint to anterior inferior instability of the shoulder joint. We then evaluate the articular surface of the humeral head and the glenoid fossa. This is the ball and socket of the shoulder joint. As you can see here, there's no evidence for degenerative change or acute injury to the joint surface. As we pan out with the arthroscope, one can visualize the inferior aspect of the glenoid labrum. We then advance the arthroscope into the axillary recess. Here you can see the thickening of the inferior capsule forming the posterior bands of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the capsular attachment to the inferior portion of the surgical neck of the humerus. Next, we drive the arthroscope posteriorly and superiorly around the normal bare area of the humeral head and return to our original vantage point where we first visualized the long head of the biceps tendon. Here we can visualize the articular surface of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus rotator cuff tendons. Driving the arthroscope superiorly and laterally, one can evaluate the broad insertion of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus on the greater tuberosity of the humeral head. There is no evidence for rotator cuff tear. This concludes our standard diagnostic arthroscopy, demonstrating the normal anatomy of a healthy shoulder joint. Thank you for watching.